Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2, and today we're going to be satiating that hunger that all of you had for creating a solar system, but not any solar system. We're going to be creating our own solar system, realistically, although I'm going to skip around a bit and there's a lot of different models for this. We're going to use the disk accretion model, but along with the disk instability model because nothing's perfect, but we're going to do our best. But pretty much uh, the model starts with matter and we need to get matter from somewhere. So we assume that very, 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 very long ago, um, billions of years ago, we had a star. I don't care. This star is not massive enough for what I want to do. We need a much more massive star. Uh, yeah, 10 suns. That's going to work. UI Scotty, we're going to use you. And we're going to explode you. So that's the first thing. We need a star to go supernova. And you know what? We'll do this by increasing your mass. That way we get more mass and we get a nice explosion. So, supernova. A supernova is when a star is unable to continue nuclear fusion, and so it collapses on itself, creating a massive explosion. Uh, looks like this is going to take too long, so let's just use a tool. Explode. Boom. Wow. This is moving quite slowly. Oh no, it's not moving slowly, it's just that UI Scuddy is just so ginormous that it looks like it's moving slowly. So the destruction of this star is going to end with a supernova, which is all of these gases that are flying out. And we see that the star itself disappears and this gas is left over. This is going to be the nebula that our solar system starts in. So all of this material, uh, although it does have quite a bit of velocity, and it's spreading out in all directions, uh, gravity is going to kick in. And we're just going to murder the remnant of U.S. Getty. And we're going to wait until this becomes so diverse that it's invisible, because we are unable to actually build stuff in here, because there is quite a bit of uh, <laughs> heat, and anything I try to do is going to, well, die because of the amount of heat. So after this supernova does a good job cooling down a bit and after a bit of time we have all the material still here and we're going to say yes we have all of this material from the star that just exploded all this material spread all over the place and so now we are starting with a ton of free gases and material. Now the question is how do we get from that to our solar system. So first we're going to start out with the most massive part of the solar system because it is what starts forming first uh, because well it, once things start condensing together there's more mass and when there's more mass that mass can attract more mass and so it's kind of a feedback loop and it's just going to continue but we need to give it something to start on. So once that, I just threw some hydrogen down, but this game won't let me just turn that into a star. I need to start with something. So the formation of the sun. Um, we're going to represent the very small particles, starting with the size of an asteroid, because at this point, it's just things basically colliding with each other and sticking together with gravity. Uh, well, gravity doesn't even play a major part right here. For the beginning, with the atoms and molecules, it's more of the stronger forces, but then as the mass builds up, gravity starts to take the lead. But we are going to start at the size of an asteroid because of the scheme's limitations, and then we are going to simulate the material coming over because we're going to just put this at what? One kilometer per second. Aha! All these materials are going to come towards it because while it is the most massive object in the area, because it's the most massive object in the area, it's going to be able to pull the most in. So as you can see, it is increasing in size as the mass hits it. So we're going to do this. 
And there we go. As the sun absorbs more particles, it becomes more massive. And as it becomes more massive, it has a larger gravitational pull which lets it get more particles and at this point it is getting close to the size of the moon now the Sun is getting a lot of mass now and soon we're going to see the real result of that mass you're gonna see any second now the temperature of the Sun is going to start to rise and this is because the amount of mass and the gravity crushing the mass into the center is causing the center of the planet to heat up. Because the sun is currently just a gas giant. And there it is. So now we're at 2000 degrees. We're seeing the sun is beginning to gain heat because of its mass. And this is a very important stage. The heat needs to go up quite a bit higher though. So we're gonna start going at 10 Earths at a time. Oh, whoopsies. We have to get the mass of the sun up to a feasible level. Now we're at 2400 degrees. And if I speed things up, you'll see that it's actually expanding and it's getting, it's glowing. It's getting very, very hot because of the core being compressed so hot. It's pushing heat out, which is causing it to expand but it's not done yet it may be hot but it's not nearly as bright nor hot as it's going to be in a few seconds so if we give it just a little bit more material we're going to see that the surface temperature is going to go up quite a bit but not as fast as I want it to so we're just going to add now let's add a Jupiter with each particle. That's going to do it. And then once the temperature hits a certain point, we're going to see a nuclear fusion begin in the center of the sun. The temperature is now high enough that the uh, protons uh, from the hydrogen are leaving their electrons and flying into each other at very high speed, causing them to merge, letting out heat, and that heat is causing it to go even faster and yeah this is the beginning of a star and then as we add more and more mass the star is going to expand and because it's hydrogen it's going to get more stable because it'll be able to hold itself more and hydrogen is the best fuel for a star to use for efficiency and any second now we're going to see it hit the mass of the sun so let's just set this to the mass of the sun However, it's going to take quite a bit of time for this to calm down. Um, it's a very, very young star. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of in its moody years. It's going to take a little bit for it to stop all the solar flares and craziness. Um, so we'll keep the young sun there. And now let's go on to the next stage. Okay, so now we've got the sun, which has formed from all of these materials flying together through different forces and accreting into, well, a star. Now, there's also planets, and let's get into that. So first, uh, the gas giants like Jupiter formed actually very similarly to the sun. So instead of repeating that, I'm just going to plop them down because I am such a cheater. I'm going to... This isn't going to be um, perfectly placed out, but I'm going to fix it in each stage when I need to. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and there's our gas giants. So the gas giants were like the sun, but they didn't get nearly enough mass to become a star. Jupiter was the closest, but not quite enough. Uh, by the time they got to planethood, there wasn't enough material left over for them to reach starhood because the sun had gobbled most of it up. But now there's something very special going on, slightly closer to the sun, and that is the rocky planets. So, after these billions of years, or millions and millions and millions of years, we have gone by so far with the sun in such forming. 
we now have to worry about the rocky planets and we're going to do earth for this example so if we plop a random rock down here uh, these rocks formed just like anything else from all that material coalescing and compressing together also little objects from other solar systems and just passing through space that were caught by the sun but the main point is that we just have a rock here and this is a slightly more fun planet to make uh, because there are lots of explosions because when two rocks hit each other they don't just kind of merge together like gas does they uh they smash into each other so earth is now going to begin to form how exciting and how earth is going to form is through a lot of collisions uh, lots of small asteroids smacking into each other over time getting attracted to each other through gravity they're going to rip each other apart, suck each other into each other, and slowly form something larger. Although, they're kind of ignoring each other right now. Jeez. Uh, let's pull this into another simulation. Okay, so here we have young Earth, very young Earth, practically <laughs> non-existent Earth. And we're going to throw some mass at it. And we're going to watch as over time, as it gets more mass, it becomes more capable of sucking in more mass. Uh, the little objects are being pulled in at greater speeds. And we just hit a very important part uh, of Earth's formation. So at what mass are we at? We're very small. So let's do in terms of the moon. At 0 0.00008 nine moons um that's a number that doesn't actually have much signi uh, significance eh, i can't talk but the point is that at this point there is enough mass on the earth that there is enough gravity acting on it that each side of the earth is being pulled in towards the center and it's going to make the earth start to form into a sphere now earth isn't a perfect sphere it's an oblate spheroid meaning because of its spin the uh, equator actually bulges out a little bit and the poles go in a little bit but we're ignoring that we're just gonna call it a sphere for now because it doesn't have a spin right now we're gonna get into that later so earth is going to gobble up a lot of material and now it looks pretty spherical um we are at very 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 small <laughs> Earth is very small right now, but as time goes on, it's more capable of sucking in objects around it. And now we can really see the size difference compared to these asteroids. And at this point, it's clear that with all the material left in that nebula caused by that supernova, um, as long as there's a bit of raw material around it, it is now big enough to suck in everything it needs. And so it eats. And it eats. And it eats. Uh, eating is not the proper terminology, but I'm going to say it because it sounds, uh, makes Earth sound humanoid. And everyone likes m making things sound human. There we go. And now, you know, this is a little bit bigger than the objects Earth would have ran into, but I can throw this at it and it'll speed it up a bit. So here we are, Earth is now large enough that the collisions are actually causing notable uh, craters on the surface. The amount of collisions is heating it up quite a bit. It's it's three degrees higher than absolute zero, guys. Pretty warm. No, it's not, it's not big enough to retain much heat yet, but we can see that its temperature is going up now. Earth is becoming a planet very slowly but it is happening do, 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 do. and it wouldn't only hit the sides of earth it would also hit the top of earth and the bottom of earth but i'm just doing this the simple way so earth is now gaining mass exponentially as it gets heavier it's able to attract more mass and can it eat Sedna? Yes, it can. Okay, so now we can really start speeding things up. Earth is now a tenth of the size of the moon. Look at that. And as more and more and more collisions hit Earth, as I said before, the temperature is certainly going up. And now we have 
Young Earth, glowing, very bright, um, very angry Earth. It's even hot enough that it's letting some material off of itself. We don't want that. We do want it to be toasty and warm like Earth was, but we don't want it to slowly murder itself with the heat. So now I think it can handle... Yeah, it's just going to gulp down a few mercuries now to get up to one Earth. Well, not one Earth, we're going to get close, but something happened to Earth that was pretty special. And this doesn't apply for the other terrestrial planets. This is this is an Earth thing. This is Earth's story here. Um, I had this in a video making Earth realistically, but you know, we're going to go over it here too, because we're doing Earth for all the terrestrial planets, so I'll go into depth here. So at one point, an object about the size of Mars actually collided with Earth. Uh, such a collision would have completely destroyed the planet, but it was a grazing, uh, grazing shot. It only hit the edge of Earth and ripped past it, which caused the collision to not be as destructive, but it did a few things. So first off, because that was a little bit faster than I wanted it to be, uh, but the point still gets across. Um, it spun Earth. Part of it. Part of the importance of this is it gave Earth a pretty... Uh, it, it definitely affected the spin of the Earth. So, we're going to be using it to give Earth its spin. Uh, it didn't... it wasn't the only factor that goes into Earth's spin. But, for us, I think we actually did a good job. How quickly are we spinning? What is the rotational period? Three hours. Okay, so 24 hours. There we go. Close enough. Um, so now we have Earth, and a few other things it did, it deposited a lot of material into the core of Earth, and it let a lot of material fly out from the collision, which then went on to form the moon. So yes, we've made the Earth, we've made the moon, we've made all the great things, and then over time, Earth is going to cool down. We... not if things keep hitting it, though. This is a problem. Stop hitting Earth, you mean people. Or mean asteroids. Asteroids have feelings, too. Um, and then, after some time, we're going to go to a temperature where liquid water can actually form. And although there isn't enough liquid water on here, if we move that slider up a little bit... Not that much. Not that little. Not that much. Wow, you want to actually, like, work? Come on. Come on, I can make this beautiful. Oh, come on! Why does it get rid of, like, everything at once, and then it puts it all back? I just want to go slowly. Maybe I'm just way too impatient. So here's me being patient, and it doesn't look like I'm getting anything out. There we are. There you go, we got some oceans. And yay! Terrestrial planets! So, there we go. That That's gonna do it, uh, because we have the sun, how the sun formed, and then we've got how the uh inner planets rocky planets plus pluto but pluto isn't really a planet so mercury venus earth and mars formed in that way we just talked about and then we've got jupiter saturn uranus neptune and they all formed in a similar way to the sun except with far less mass and they all formed in a very nice disc and yes that's the best I can do with Universe Sandbox 2. I'm missing a lot, but I'm going to do the best I can with this game. So congratulations, guys. I made a solar system, and I made our own solar system, and I did it somewhat scientifically accurately. Somewhat. I said somewhat. Stop clicking that dislike button. I said somewhat.